next on the Love You More podcast. How many people in your neighborhood have been through what you've been through? Having to literally identify your daughter now as your son. When Taylor came out to us, we said, you know what? We would rather have a a live son than a dead daughter because transgender young people have the highest rate of suicide among any type of person. I'm, it's like, I'm... And, you know, at first it was crushing to me because I'm like, well, I don't have a daughter anymore. I have a son, so I won't have, you know, walk her down the aisle. I won't have that daughter, daddy-daughter dance at the wedding. But I'm going to love my child unconditionally. That's my child. And that's just how I looked at it. Period. Well, why didn't you do what most Christian people do? Come on, shut up, 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 she, T, T, P, and touch their stomach. What I knew in my heart is that I needed to surround him with a bunch of love. I'm not asking you for your agreeers once again. I'm asking you for your respect. Love you more, love you more, love you more. Indeed, family, it's your nephew, Willie Mo. Hey, listen, my prayer is that you enjoy um, the last episode of the Love You More series. Okay, I seen all of your comments and uh, some of you guys were nice and others, well, praying for you. <laughs> right do me a favor i don't want you to just kind of be eyeballing what we're doing kind of taking a sneak peek without becoming a part of our family so do me a favor if you can i would love for you to just click that little subscribe button and what i'm challenging you to do is bring in about seven to ten more people because i want them to be a part of this love you more community here's the thing i see ladies they get married and they say Willie, I lost myself. Or maybe you have a child and you think to yourself, man, I'm in practice all day and I got to do all of this stuff. And you feel like you lost yourself. Here's the thing. It's so important that you understand that moments quickly become memories. So if you can enjoy the moment by loving yourself, right? The Bible declares this, that you're supposed to love your neighbor as you love yourself. It's kind of tough to be a great mother, father, husband, wife without loving yourself. And it's really starting to affect your health and your relationships. So do me a favor. Just put a quick smile on your face by faith. Okay, good. Just smile on your face because today we're about to have a hard conversation. In fact, just put it in the chat. Make sure you leave a comment after you subscribe. Just put a hard conversation. And here's the thing. The conversation isn't really as hard as it has to be. To all my super duper pseudo sophisticated kingdom people, I love you. I'll be honest. I am not changing what the word of God says. I am not attempting to shift anybody's trajectory. Biblically, what I'm attempting to do today is to give you an option of thought. An option of thought. Put that in the chat for me. Good. So today I'm hanging out with my chief of staff and her husband. And this is how the conversation came about. I'm in St. Louis. Shout out to the STL. Throw that L up. I'm in St. Louis and I end up going to her birthday party. And I'm sitting there and we had a good time. You know, we just having some cocktails and just really enjoying ourselves. And just uh, they got a pool and black people in St. Louis don't really have pools like that. OK, let me just be honest with you. Um, it's only a handful of my <laughs> friends in St. Louis. I think Mike Roberts got a pool. Alice got a pool. And I think Charles them got a pool, but it's like above ground. So it don't really count as a pool at all. It just kind of it's like a lake <laughs> pool or whatever. You know, one of them general dollar pools, but it's just bigger. Hopefully you don't get mad at that. He's bigger than me, but he came with me. OK, let's get that out the way. So we're sitting around the pool and we're having a good time. And I don't even know how we get on the subject. But we begin to talk. We begin to talk about transgender. And immediately I'm just like. Don't really know much about it. I hear it in the in the you know in the news. I guess I subconsciously had some feelings about it. I know I was a strong advocate of not changing the bathrooms, but I never really got into it. Um, I was just like, you know, God is gonna heal. That's always been my positive message as it pertains to anything. God will heal, God will reveal, God will. And I just always put God in it. And I believe that God is still gonna do whatever He chooses to do. Um, however, I was enlightened. And I was giving the option of thought. So today we're going to talk to a couple, an African-American couple. Here's the thing. I want to just kind of preface this too. Let's go and put this out here. There are different types 
of black folk. KD ain't it, ain't it? Different type of black folk. Yep. You got the Yale type of black folks that go to Princeton. And I ain't got no problem with that because I was adopted. I found my biological family. And some of our family members graduated from Princeton and Yale. Okay, let's mm -hmm. go and put that out there. Shout out to all of them. Dr. Ian Smith, dear friend of mine, I think he went to Princeton. That's my brothers who I go see in Chicago. But it's a different pedigree of African-American <laughs> people. Let's just get that out the way. These is catfish fried hard black people. <laughs> Yes, Lord. If you don't like your catfish fried hard, you not really like I'm I'm catfish fried hard black people. And these are catfish fried hard black people, right? And the thing is, um, they literally had to come to grips that the daughter that they had was now the son they had to accept. And when I was talking to them, they did it so gracefully. That I immediately said, I gotta get you to I gotta get you to the studio quick, and I wanna have this message during our inaugural season. Because I think if black people who like that catfish fried hard see the grace that you've had with your son, and notice that I said son, because I am going to respect who he decided to be. And I know that that shakes somebody up, especially in the platform that I have. But after this conversation, maybe just maybe, and I'm not trying to change anybody's mind on what you think, maybe the option of thought would allow you to not necessarily be in agreement, but at least have a level of respect for people's choices. I'm hanging out with my sister and my brother, Alice Prince, Carlton Prince. What's going on, champions? <laughs> Thank you much. Thank you for having us. Listen, so the Love You More series is all about teaching people how to love you more. And to be honest with you, when I say you guys have loved Taylor more than I've ever seen any any devout Christians, and in your case, devout Catholic people who don't play with a rosary in her hand, right? <laughs> I mean, literally, when I'm praying on staff meetings, I'd be like, in Jesus' name. You know, I'm back, Jesus' name. She'd be like, amen. <laughs> she, she do what she does. But you guys have loved them so much. So before we get into the interview, I want to show you a video from the Love You More series, even though millions of people watched last week. I'm not sure if you were a part of the millions of people who did. Mm -hmm. Because there's a part in this series that I want to pull out to kind of be the icebreaker for this conversation. Bring your attention to the screen. Check it out. Katie, hit them. More series, and so make sure once again that you subscribe, okay? And um, here's the thing to all of my people who are now my directors in my Patreon community, you can be a part of this, right? You can actually be a director in this podcast, be a director in the series by just becoming a part of our partnership. So I want you to make sure that you go to loveyoumore.love or loveyoumore.com. It's gonna be a really great opportunity for you to partner with us, all right? Um, my question to you guys initially how many people in your neighborhood? catfish fried hard black people have been through what you've been through. Having to literally identify your daughter now as your son. I probably honestly don't know anybody. And I feel like it's not because they're, they're not fair. Mm -hmm. I don't think people are open and talk about it. You mm -hmm. know, black folks, we keep our business to ourselves. Don't yeah. tell people mm -hmm. what's happening in my house. Yeah. But to say that there are not uh, transgender um, humans in community yeah. would would not would be a false statement. So so make that make so so make transgender make sense to us. So for me, as you know, I was very ignorant, not on purpose, because you know the truth is I love everybody. I just didn't deep dive into it because just like every other Christian person, I'm pray for you. Right, you know, whatever right. you're going through, the Lord going to make you, you. And, you know, I will say this and being very candid about the conversation. I was just like, oh, come on, man. These people are just confused. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just like praying against confusion because we say that God is not the author of confusion. Mm -hmm. And so when you take on that trajectory, you don't really have as much empathy, but you do. You do have a certain love for everybody. 
And then my chief of staff, who I love to life, and I love your husband, Carlton. We done been to the White House together. All of us run through there like we know what we're doing. And we all black people mm -hmm. catfish fry hard. I was looking at you, I'm like, you know where you going? Did you taste the shrimp? We was, we was in there. Yep. And so I had to have a different level of empathy. So I, I you know, I'm, I'm kind of thinking, thinking to myself, can you like educate the LGBTQ community and the transgender community for people like us who who may not understand. Yeah, so absolutely. So first and foremost, Carlton and I are not experts, right? Okay. We are parents journeying through this. Okay. What we have decided is to love our son unconditionally, ten toes down, but nobody mess with him. <laughs> okay. Period. Um, and we we came to that realization when Taylor came out to us. We said, you know what? We would rather have a a live son than a dead daughter. Because transgender young people have the highest rate of suicide among any type of person. Wow. And so I could not fathom not loving my son. Um, however, it was a grieving process for us. So the LGBTQIA plus, um, L is for lesbian, um, G is for gay, um, LGBTQ, Q is for queer, uh, queer. T is for transgender, um, I is for intersex, and A is for asexual. That mixture together is either your sexual orientation or your gender identity. Okay. It's transgender uh, people, uh, it's a gender identity. So my son felt like um, he, he was a man trapped in a woman's body. And, and there is no way that I know what that feels like. But you know, I'm loving him as him the way I'm supposed to love him, the way a mother loves a son, period, because that's what God calls us to do. He calls us to love. Um, God would not call me to hate my son, hate so, my born so, wait, kid. Let, let, me, let, me just, let me just like really like get into this. You say son with such confidence. Mm -hmm. How did you get there? Like, was there a process? Because even for me, mm -hmm. I just did it on national radio today. Mm -hmm. And I was very careful mm -hmm. when talking about this conversation because I knew Taylor. I went to her 16th birthday party. Mm -hmm. I remember mm -hmm. her running up to me happy mm -hmm. with me pulling up in the expedition on 22 with all them TV. Mm -hmm. Like, pretty Willie came to my party. Mm -hmm. You know, because she's St. Louis too. Mm -hmm. Did it take practice? Like, what was the process of you becoming this confident in calling Taylor the daughter, Taylor your son? Absolutely. So I think for Carlton and, and I both, uh, what we don't want to do is misgender our son. So misgendering any transgender person is calling them by their incorrect pronouns. You have to respect pronouns. And so, of course, we are human. So, you know, at the very beginning, we probably did make mistakes um, because we were used to calling Taylor, you know, her for 21 years. So just out of just doing something for 21 years, you may make a mistake, but... Uh, we were very intentional not to make those mistakes. Um, and we're very intentional to correct people for people who may be like you. You just thought Taylor was in Europe. I did. I and, did. That was the thing. And I was like, I was nah, you know Taylor is a he. And then that's how we kind of got on the conversation. He was like, huh, what? And I was like, but here go the pictures. He was like, it never just clicked. Like, never, this I was my that... oldest son. And so now I have three sons. I'm. It's like, I'm... Like, do you, like, you hear the confidence that you have? And don't get me wrong, like, I'm in, I i I'm encouraged mm -hmm. by it to know that Black people with catfish fry hard mm -hmm. can do that. And I keep prefacing that, I want to I say that, is because you know how we are, you know, it's a certain certain sector of African-American people that were just like, oh, they would always accept that. But you from the Cleed town, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. you you got your first job at 14 because mm -hmm. you was, you know, you came out the gutter and you you mm -hmm. had to learn to do whatever you had to do. Mm -hmm. And it just takes a different level of maturity um, to be here. What can you kind of walk me through? And, and I don't want to like speed through this conversation. I know right. we got times and all that other mm -hmm. stuff, but I know that there's a parent right now who has said, you can't come back to your house mm -hmm. or you not invited for the Christmas dinner. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, it's a, it's a person right now who's transgender 
and and now don't no church no nothing mm-hmm. because they understand what happens when you were christened and baptized as mm-hmm. Taylor the girl, mm-hmm. but you come back as Taylor the man. So mm-hmm. I really want to walk through this thing. Carlton, how did you find out as a, cause you a man's man. I'm mm-hmm. talking about trucks. <laughs> don't play, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Don't play about your sons. I see how yeah. you love your sons. Like, how did you all find out uh-huh. that Taylor, you know, had, it w- was now Taylor the male? More Love You More podcast after this. Coaches and consultants, I want to invite you to the first annual Wealthy Black Coach Live. It's the first time ever here at Klein Attraction University. We're going to do a public, not private event for over 300 different coaches and consultants from all around the world. And it's the only event created specifically for black coaches and consultants by black coaches and consultants. We've created a room just for you where you're celebrated. It's a three-day action-packed groundbreaking experience designed specifically to support coaches and consultants and thought leaders in their pursuit to grow in a highly profitable coaching business. Over the three value-packed days, we're gonna work together with you to create a customized blueprint that will help you build your coaching business to seven figures or beyond by building the right processes, the right systems, and attracting the right team members so you don't have to be stuck inside of your business and be able to reach more people and change more lives. So if you wanna learn exactly what's working right now in the coaching industry and you wanna network with over 300 other coaches and consultants and learn from the best in the business, this is gonna be an incredible experience for you. And I want to invite you to grab your ticket right now. We're offering early bird discounts for a limited time. So go ahead and click on the button right now, grab your ticket, and I'll see you there. Love you more, love you more, love you more. Now back to the Love You More podcast. Like, how did you all find out uh-huh. that Taylor, you know, had it w- was now Taylor the male? Alice knew before me. So Alice came and told me, and I'm like, you know, I'm like, typical me, I'm like, okay, whatever. So then she was like, no, I'm serious. I'm like, okay, so we're, we're going to deal with this as a family. And, you know, first it was crushing to me because I'm like, well, I don't have a daughter, I have a son, so I won't have, you know, walk her down the aisle. I won't have that daughter, daddy daughter dance at the wedding. But I'm going to wow. love my child unconditionally. That's my child. I'm going to always be there for him. So I was just like, you know, we're going to deal with this as a family and we're going to roll with it. It's just, it is what it is. It was his 21st birthday. Mm-hmm. And then we took, we him, took him to, to Vegas. Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> so what is, why Vegas? Like, because that's, that's, okay. that's where he wanted to go. <laughs> okay. So we picked up, to go to took Vegas. the whole family go, to Vegas. Yep. We was like, okay, that's what we're doing. We coming out and we going to Vegas. So, mm-hmm. So you come out, you go to Vegas. So you have, so you also have two, two boys, mm-hmm. two other boys. Mm-hmm. Twins. Two twin boys. Mm-hmm. Did they know? They said that they did know a year before us. Okay. And, you know, they knew and they are supportive and they have a big brother and, you know, like they are as thick as thieves. Mm-hmm. It, it's just grace and love. And we've always I mean, no parent is perfect, none, zero. I don't want anybody to think that we don't misstep, that we not perfect, you know, none of that. But, you know, at the end of the day, we've always tried to instill compassion and grace and mercy um, in our kids at a young age, at a very, very young age. And so my, my guess is that God was in that thing when Taylor came out to her younger brothers. Yeah. And my guess is that God... Or, you know, God was with me and allows me to journey through this, you know, being a mother of three boys, being a strong mm-hmm. mother of, of three boys and raising them the best that I can, allowing them to be the best humans that, you know, that this world has to offer. That's that's what matters to me, you yeah. know. And I think they actually became closer. I when Taylor came also, out. like the the the, the twin dynamic. boys, was different. Yeah. Now mm-hmm. with Taylor, yeah, they actually mm-hmm. became much closer, and they look like triplets. Yeah, people think they're triplets. People all the time. think they triplets. I won't gonna tell you the night I was over there, but, mm-hmm. but I ain't gonna lie because you had posted that on social media. Uh-huh. So you you posted Taylor on social graduating, media. graduating from college, from college. So here's my thing. Mm-hmm. I was like, 
Cause you a genius, mm -hmm. and he has a level of genius. I was like, just Man, a level. Listen, I said, I listen. We already know you a genius. Me and Carlton, you know, what I'm saying from the Cleveland down from Berkeley, we trying. Okay, <laughs> we just get around you, let it rub off on us a little mm -hmm. bit. But guess what? You gonna keep us out of trouble. It's all good. But no, I want to be honest with you. I just thought one of the boys had like just graduated. just graduated. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And here's the thing: it's still a learning cur curve mm -hmm. because I honor and respect that. Taylor is one of the boys. Uh -huh. This is a learning curve it for is, me, it right? Is. So I just, I never even look, looked at it or even thought about it. Mm -hmm. I want to go back to this, this thing that Carlton said, because I don't want to skate over it. He said, I had to realize that I would not be walking my, I wouldn't get a chance to walk my daughter down the aisle. Mm -hmm. Like, how do you grapple with those feelings? Like, did you do journaling? Like, uh, how did you grapple with that? Or is that something you, like, just I'm 100? still grappling with it. It's still, you know, sometimes it's hard. You just have to, but I'm like, like Alice said, I'd rather have a, a live son than a dead daughter. So I couldn't imagine Taylor not being around. So I had to learn, mm -hmm. educate myself, and, you know, learn how to deal with it and cope with it. Uh, I talked a lot to Alice mm -hmm. and prayed a lot. So it was just like, you know, mm -hmm. I look at it like, in our community, we have a lot of people who commit a lot of crimes and murders. Mm -hmm. They finally don't turn their back on them. Mm -hmm. Wow. And you said that's a sin. The mm -hmm. Thou shall not kill. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I'm not going to turn my back on my son. Mm -hmm. And that's just how I looked at it. Period. I love it. We're and not. one of my, one of my patrons, um, I call them my directors. This is a learning curve for me too. Mm -hmm. My love you more directors. Um, they just sent in a message, right? And they were just like, how do you deal with the public like embarrassment though? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, when you have a daughter, Mm -hmm. And you like a girl dad or mm -hmm. you like this, my, you know, you got mm -hmm. uh, fortunately enough, you know, we were still my space and Facebook, mm -hmm. all that mm -hmm. other stuff. Not that we're ashamed of what anything, but mm -hmm. how do you deal with the internal? You Catholic Catholic. I'm super. I I'm, thought I'm I was going to be a nun before I'm talking I met about, him. Yeah, talking about like none. Like this, it, I wanna really none make, like how do you not? <laughs> and it's no not being embarrassed of your child, but embarrassed of the situation because mm -hmm. Y'all right. first generation money. I look at it like we a family mm -hmm. and we gonna stick together no matter what. Period. So if you don't like it, oh well. We don't care. We don't care. We not embarrassed. I'm not That's gonna stop breathing because you don't talk to me no more because I have a son now instead of a daughter. No. no. Okay. It did happen. We had to educate our friends and our family, people that we cared about, the people, you know, so we, we did. That was an education. And when people misgender our son, we 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 correct them with care. We correct them with dignity. We you know we we give them grace. We give them mercy. We give them all those things. But no, nope, you know we have a great village around us. Um, and so no, we haven't dealt with that. And and if you know and if people are talking about our family behind our backs and all of that, it don't get to us. So, you know, it, 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 we, we, it has not penetrated us. Like I haven't felt anybody disrespectful or any of that. We don't get transphobic comments under our, you know, transphobic comments. Um, our community has embraced us and continues to embrace us. So, um, and we wouldn't have it any other way. We don't deal with mess. We don't deal with drama and we 10 toes down for our kids. We fight. Ten so, toes. yeah. And we fight. I told you. Know? Can't so it's fried hard. <laughs> when the mama say I'm ten toes down, yeah. So it's you know, it, but it's it, and, and we don't care if others don't believe how we believe either. Your belief system has nothing to do with our belief system. We are going to love our kids, hmm. you know. Hopefully, God pricks your heart to understand that God made us all in his likeliness and his image. And he caused us to love and to be, you know, that's what he calls us for. Yeah. And um, and if you can't love uh the LGBTQIA um community, that has everything to do with you and between you and God and not me and Carlton and my household. Jeez. And I can <laughs> definitely my bell right quick. I could definitely so passionately. I love it. I could definitely tell you that Taylor's worst nightmare, uh, he said to me, was dying young and being buried in a dress. I cannot imagine, you know, a kid's worst nightmare dying young and being buried in a dress. And I was just like, 
Oh, wow. Like, I can't believe. So that just means my son had been contemplating death all those years, mm. but was not, did not want to take his life because he did not want to die and be buried in a dress. Mm -hmm. Like, that's serious. More Love You More podcast after this. You know, all relationships start off beautiful. The love is so intense in the beginning until life happens. No matter how disciplined you are, temptation is everywhere. And we all have to fight with our internal monsters. And sometimes we fall into the trap and we hurt the ones we say we love the most. As you get older, loved ones pass away and you're left to live life with a void that you never really anticipated. For some reason, people never talk about the parts of you that die when your loved one leaves the earth. It's so easy to lose who you are in the midst of all of this. I lost myself because I forgot to love myself. I'd like to take you on a journey in hopes that you can learn how to love you more. Wow. To check out the first episode, log on to loveyoumore.com. Love you more. Love you more. Love you more. Now back to the Love You More podcast. And I can <laughs> definitely my bell right quick. I can definitely say so passionately. I love it. I can definitely tell you that Taylor's worst nightmare. Uh, he said to me was dying young and being buried in a dress. I cannot imagine, you know, a kid's worst nightmare dying young and being buried in a dress. And I was just like, Oh wow. Like I can't believe. So that just means my son had been contemplating death all those years, mm. but was not, did not want to take his life. Because he did not want to die and be buried in a dress. Mm -hmm. Like, that's serious. I do want to also say that it is a grieving process for us, too, because we're grieving our daughter. Our daughter is no longer here. So there is a grieving process that we go through. I go to therapy. So you go to therapy? Yes. Okay. Yes. I go to, I mean, among other things, mm -hmm. life be life in. Um, so yeah, so it is a grieving a grieving process. So it's nothing that could just happen overnight. But Do you there's share a journey. Grievances? So like I'm really so I really want you to really see this. Mm -hmm. So coming out of out of that, the turning point of, of their record, I was really saying, like, inside I'm so empty, this is hard, I'm still so alone. Oh. But that's something I never shared with Khalil. Mm -hmm. Is that do you ever get the opportunity to share your grievances or because of the statistics of transgender people and suicide, do you walk a thin line between truth and truth and honesty and support? What's that line like? That's a good question. So everything you felt in a turning point, transgender people feel Every single day, they feel empty every single day. They feel like nobody understands them every single day. They feel like they are foreigners in their own body every single day. And there is no way that you or I could ever understand it. So let's just be clear on that. In terms of sharing our grievances, I wouldn't necessarily call them grievances, but do we share points of contingent or points that we don't understand? Yeah. And we don't walk a thin line. Like we are very true and honest people. And mm -hmm. Carlson and I like, this is my man, this is my husband, this is my best friend, this is my partner. So these are all the things, you know, he's all the things. So we are very honest with him and we're mm -hmm. also honest with our kids. So if we like, well... Well, actually, Taylor helps me educate other people, too, because mm -hmm. I'm like, so, Taylor, what about this or what about that or what's going on with this? So Taylor is, a is able to really let me have a real conversation uh, so that I can educate others as mm -hmm. well. So I would say yeah, now nah. I've learned to be respectful of people with pronouns like mm -hmm. you can't just automatically assume. Excuse no. me, ma'am. Excuse me. So, you know, you got to be like, well. How would you like me to address you? What are your pronouns? What are your, pronouns? What are your preferred pronouns? Remember, mm -hmm. we were in St. Joseph, that. Missouri, and yeah. we were at that TJ Maxx. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I asked my salesperson, because you don't always have to identify somebody as a gender. So I asked my salesperson, what are your preferred pronouns? And it took that salesperson off guard. 
And um, they wrote me a little note and was like, my parents don't even respect me. Thank you for seeing me. Hold on, just pause. Katie, did you hear that she said they? Like, do you see how intentional that was? So here's the thing, to my because I already know some of my super sophisticated super saints is in there like, Willie, say something. Tell them about Corinthians 748. I can feel it in my shot or not. But here's the thing. I want you to understand this. I told you in the beginning, I am not asking for your agreeance. I'm challenging your respect. Like, I really mm -hmm. want that to sit in your heart. I want you to really feel that in your shanana, right? Because I never agreed with the people in the neighborhood who was hustling, doing whatever. And then I found myself hustling. Mm -hmm. And all I required was my respect. And the only reason that I'm not in jail right now, that I'm the guy that you want to pat on the back because he's so positive, because I had two parents who didn't judge my decisions. They chose to support me in the midst of my decision until I can either do one or two things. That's my daddy. He's 91 years old. He said, hell, if you're going to go out there and sell that shit, <laughs> you better be the biggest one. Because <laughs> ain't no need to go to jail 20 years and not have $20 in your pocket. <laughs> but if you want to do something different, I'm going to be the same daddy that hugged you when you was on honor roll. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm just wanting you to really feel this right now because I feel like just in my heart and in my spirit, that there's a young person right now who's going through so much on the inside and they can't even run to the people who were called to love them unconditionally despite of their gender choice. Mm -hmm. That's got to be tough. That's got to be hard. So I want to show you two people who literally made a decision that I'm going to love him mm -hmm. and I'm going to respect where he is. I desire for things to be different. But I'm going to be okay with where they are now. And I'm going to love and respect my son. I'm not asking you for your agreeance once again. I'm asking you for your respect. Carlton, I got to ask you this. Because KD has slid me a note and I told him he could talk on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but his voice is so deep and better. Uh, they're going to wonder who he is. But... Like, um, like, how did you get rid of your pride and your ego, like, just as a man? Because for us, you know, it's a little different. Women are a little bit more lenient. You know, mm -hmm. most women, some <laughs> some women, when they moving in, they wasn't like they call it not soft life, mm -hmm. femininity. I don't care what you are, as long as you fine. You know how that go for me. Like, I, <laughs> you can be hard one day. It don't matter to me, you know. It's probably why I got in this situation I got in. Oh. <laughs> but pray for me. I love me more now. But in any event, um... Like, how did you get rid of your, how did you get rid of that pride? Like, cause men, we prideful, yeah. bro. And we got an ego. And it's, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't know how, like how, what was that like for you? Um, mainly just talking with Alice. Okay. And just talking about, you know, how I felt and. So you did communicate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. I use my therapy strategies. Yeah. I use my therapy strategies. Like, <laughs> cause you know, with us, we, as she said earlier, black people, we hold stuff in. Yeah. Like we just, and just let it, as we say, blow over, but you really didn't deal with the situation. Mm -hmm. And then when it come back up, then you blow and snap and all of a sudden it's a big problem mm -hmm. because you didn't let out your emotions and how you felt about it. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did with I, I cried. I ain't afraid of it, I cried, you know, cause I was like, no, it sure. was the death of a daughter. Mm -hmm. But it was, you know, but then I look at it, it was the birth of a son. I still have my child Come in my on, life. baby, click that button, hit that button. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm like, you know, he tailors still my son and my mm -hmm. child always. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to always be there for him. Period. Wow. So, and we're going to set some new traditions. So yeah. when you think when about new traditions, um, I've been in your house mm -hmm. and it's very family oriented. They got like two dogs. They got secret. And royalty. They got royalty. Mm -hmm. Secret is my type of dog, but secret of villain. Okay. Yeah. He gonna bite you on the slide. Okay. <laughs> right. That little dog, you think the big one, you running from the big one, the little one gonna bite you on the ass. I'm like, get this little dog. You know what I'm saying? But the big one, he looked like he gonna do something. Mm -hmm. So it's a very loving environment. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So, but I did notice that there weren't like baby pictures in there. Mm -hmm. Like, were you all intentional about the pictures that you took off the wall or was that something you all never had? So I, I don't think we ever had pictures. So I'm not a picture read type person. Okay. Um, but um, to your point, those memories of Taylor um, 
when he was misgendered um, at a younger age. No, we don't have those up because we choose not to have those up Um, because we want to make sure that our space, our home is a social, emotional, safe space for Taylor. We care about his mental health. Um, And so as he is journeying through this process, we want to make sure he is okay. And anyway, memories live in your heart. There Mm -hmm. is nothing tangible about a memory. Anyway, they live in your heart. So um, our main concern for all three of our um, sons is that we have a safe space for them. All three of her sons, Kay. Just think of the bravery. Like, do you, do you realize like you kind of breaking the mold of like what how would your mama how would your because y'all know your mama she a right. avid little mama I love you and I'm not talking about you I love you but what you come home and you tell your mama back in the day I now identify as Alex instead of Alice with if you don't education. get on my face hmm. if you don't get on my face with that. That's, that would that would have been my mama. If you don't get out of my face with that. Like, my mama... I mean, because... But that, the generation was different. Mm-hmm. I'm what, 21? That was 21 years. I'm just joking. I ain't 21. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. But, you know, that was... What, 45 years ago, it was different. I know it was different, but there is no different with black people. Yeah. Uh, excuse me, not just black people. Mm-hmm. Let me say this, but I'm just saying, like, I've been using the joke, black mm-hmm. catfish fried hard black people... But what if there is no different with us? How do we create a space that's safe enough for mm-hmm. them to be this way? Because your mama is somebody mama watching right now. Right, 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 right. I think it's going to be education and walking with care, grace, and mercy. Like walking in love at all times. I, I think that that's the most important thing. Like my mama right now, my mama today's mama would come and fight right now too. Like for. Te- for- Yes, for Taylor, for Taylor. Same. Like my mom probably have a gun. You know what I'm saying? So like, how did you educate her? Huh? How did you educate Taylor her? Taylor did. Taylor did. Taylor mm-hmm. educated her, and Taylor's friend Raven educated my friend Robin. Like before, um, it, so was that her her person? That was uh uh-uh, uh no nah, okay. no nah, they just grew up together. Okay. So Taylor and so I had Taylor. So my my best friend from high school. We had kids at the same time Mm -hmm. and all of us, uh, you know, Taylor and Raven, they they both were born girls with um, with girl parts. So um, when Taylor came out before Robin came to my house, Taylor's friend Raven actually gave her mom education. See, the new generation, the. you know, Gen, Gen Zers, Z, yes, yes. they different than us as Gen, uh, different than Carlton and I as Gen Xers. You know, and of course, millennials are different. They just very different <laughs> than anybody. <laughs> but um, hiring y'all is tough. Oh, Let's oh just put my that God. Out there. But, y'all is tough. But they, um, but the education happened like uh, Raven, she immediately educated her mother on pronouns. So we so, so I So what are the pronouns? How do you educate? So let's just say I think we already did it. And listen, the one thing about a man of God can't be canceled over ignorance, okay? Mm-hmm. So I think we've all been into a store and you see a man who kind of, you know, he feminine and you mm-hmm. like for me, I'll just be honest with you, I get a little bit tough. <laughs> What's up, bro? What's up, my guy? What's up, my guy? What's up, champ? You know, I start doing that. You know what I'm saying? I get a little bit. And for the girl, I get a little bit more smooth. If she, you know, I, you know, you can kind of feel in your shine on nine. I should be like, hey, what's up, sweetheart? How are you doing? And you, oh, I give some beautiful comment like, your hair is so pretty or whatever. Mm-hmm. Because I am under the mindset of change mm-hmm. versus respect. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So like, what would be the proper way for a person who was like me? Because I'm going to tell you like this, Taylor, I'm going to be honest with you. I know you since you was a baby. I'm going to ride for you. I love you. I support you. And I don't care what the world will ever say about you. I got a big platform. And as your uncle, I love you. And you ain't got to hide from me. I'm going to still come to any (laughs) birthday party that you got. I'm going to hug on you. I'm going to post you on social media because these people ain't got a heaven to hell to put you in. Mm-hmm. But for those people who who don't have the passion that I have 
for my little nephew, mm -hmm. how do I, like, how should you approach that person? I think that you have to always approach somebody with love, care, dignity, mercy, and grace, and understand that if, it, you know, if they don't change, they don't change. Like, that's between them and God at the end of the day. I think that um, understanding that just because a male is gay, it doesn't mean he has changed his pronouns either. He still may be he. He okay. just, his sexual orientation, it, he prefers males. That's yeah. it. You know, so um, I think that always, you know, asking and respecting people's pronouns is very important. You know, what pronouns do you prefer? I, you know, and, and, and that could go either ways. You know, now we have Zoom meetings. So people normally put their names and put their pronouns, their, their preferred pronouns. And even on their email, um, their e email addresses, the signature on their email lines, you will see preferred pronouns on their email just so that you may know. I ain't never um, seen it. Yep. Ain't. Now you're going to probably start paying attention to it. But I think that, you you know, you handle everybody with love and grace. And it's OK if people disagree. Like I, I'm not out to change uh, change the world. I'm out to just love my kids the best way I can. That's so dope. Um, now with that love, with that education, it may change the world, right? It may yeah. prick some hearts, but mm, so, so now God. I'm thinking about grandkids. You know, and I've I've been a strong advocate for adoption for a very very long time. Do you all look forward to adoption? Because Y'all didn't get a backstory, but I'll just tell y'all business. Y'all put this this as a daughter. Y'all put her in the best schools. You re resided mm -hmm. Kane. She done traveled the world. Mm -hmm. Like literally, y'all set him up for successes. Mm -hmm. Do you still desire grandkids from that son? Because I know you did mm -hmm. as a daughter. You want to be in the room, like because yeah. I got a daughter. She's four years old, and so. I even now, even though, you know, she can't date until she's like, you know, 70 or whatever. But <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, as long as you know, Paisley, you good. Um, is adoption an option or something that you guys kind of look forward to? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Tyler wants to adopt. And I think that, um, you know, I think that success looks different. Right. And I think that all things work together for the good. You know, I think that whatever God's will is for his life. Um, and for our life, it's going to be and we're going to be OK with that. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, if 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 Taylor uh, wants to adopt, of course, Taylor just graduated and, and just had had cool. several job offers, could never be happier in life. But down the road, if he wants to adopt, we'll definitely support him mm -hmm. and we will be the best grandparents ever and do the Don't best. Spoil them. Yeah, uh -huh. definitely spoil. Katie, what you think? I'm curious, did you ever go through the them they stage? Because that's like a softball from flat out calling him him. Mm -hmm. Did you go through that? Actually, we didn't. Yeah. It was like when he said he came out and said, you know, I, I want I'm, I identify as male. I was like, okay, let's let me just start calling him him. Yeah. Those are his preferred pronouns. Yeah. So his preferred, I mean, those are his preferred prefer pronouns, but as an English professor, saying they is grammatic, could be considered grammatically incorrect. Mm -hmm. And so when I educate people, I do say, hey, I know like this is what the English language has you to say. But if this is somebody's preferred pronouns, then yes, be very intentional, like stop and think and be very uh, intentional with saying what they prefer pronouns are. And yeah, but as an English professor, like, yeah, that's grammatically incorrect. Yeah. And because, you know, it's different. Because I had to understand it first. I'm like, it's only one person. Why am I saying they and them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just, I just learned like, that. Like, you know, I, I was just thinking about like he, him, she, her, you know. Mm -hmm. but, so. Yeah, she got me on days now too. <laughs> and, I'm and I'm learning it. And, and I'm glad you brought that up, Kay, because it kind of leads to this other question. Like, why didn't you fight for? So my other my other friend, let, let me just be clear. Like, I believe God made anything better than a woman. He kept it for himself. Yeah. Like, I became hypersexual towards women. And, you know, like I had to learn how to control myself in that world or what have you. So I wanted like. I remember a guy that I went to school with. Like he struggled with his sexuality and that was not a culture or what have you. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And you know, you kind of knew. He never really blurted it out, but his mannerism, you know what I'm saying? He's like, man, I just grew up with my mom. I was like, nah, bro, we already kind of, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Later on, he came out. I was like, well, you know, I came out. Mm-hmm. We was all like, we already Duh. Know. you know what I'm saying? We already kind of knew. But I mean, I remember in our ignorance, we were just like, let's just take him to the strip club. <laughs> Let's try to turn them out. Let's try mm-hmm. to, you know, mm-hmm. because we black folk catfish fry hard. Mm-hmm. Like as a as a mama, you took her, you took him to Vegas. I'm still learning. Mm-hmm. You took him to Vegas when he came out. Why didn't you take him to hedonism in my, you know, just like, or, or why didn't you do what most Christian people do? Come on, shut up, ba she t t p and touch their stomach. Like, were you already educated enough to know the right response, or was that just a God thing? What I what I knew in my heart is that I needed to surround him with a bunch of love. That's just what I knew, so that was and I knew that that was right. Yeah, just I need to surround him with love. I need to let him know it's gonna be all right. We gonna take this twenty dollars into the slot machine. Like we gonna have a good time. Your family gonna be behind you because I know that the world is going to turn against you. I know that there's going to be some dark nights. I know that you're going to get some transphobic emails and some ignorant stuff. I know some stuff is gonna happen that you're not gonna tell us about because we're gonna want to go fight. So, like, I know this. I know that the world can be evil and people can be very cruel. I know that. I know that you are going to have a hard time finding your safe space in this world. I know you're going to be misunderstood, but not in this household. Mm. And, like, and to Alice's point, you know, we, we support it because, like Alice said, if somebody was being mean or saying transfer, I'm ready to go ride. Like, period. Who is what it? if we didn't know? Because I'm working with Alice for the last two or three years. And I remember, you know, we had an incident and I wasn't on no homophobic nothing. We, I just I'm a I'm a man who stand on principles mm-hmm. and I don't care what come with them principles like at all. My mm-hmm. I was adopted. I was adopted mm-hmm. by two ex sharecroppers. My uncle can't read. All we got is our principles, our morals and our standard. As much as I'm a Christian, I'm just as much a guy from Berkeley. I'm still mm-hmm. in the process trying to figure things out. You know, so it's like. I've worked with you Mm -hmm. for two and a half years. And when it comes to our adoption and foster care efforts, Mm -hmm. I have strong borders on what I thought adoption should look like until I met a a same sex adoption from somebody who's very prominent in the world. And I meet this little girl from Russia who knows what I do for adoption. Mm -hmm. She is a super fan of what we do. I love your story. I watched your Mm -hmm. movie. I got your Believe Mm -hmm. shirt. Mm -hmm. And she begins to tell me her story. And she was like, I didn't care if I was getting adopted by two dogs. I needed Mm -hmm. to be out of Russia Mm because I could have died. And I love my mamas. Mm -hmm. And I was like, God, what are we doing? Like God was continuously like, like not he he softened my heart, mm-hmm. but I was so strong mm-hmm. in my adoption process of what we will do, who we will serve, mm-hmm. and what we will not represent. Mm-hmm. And I believe I'm still just as strong in some areas. How did you deal with me, knowing that I would have to bring this type of information to the board, and you know that your son that. My Taylor mm-hmm. <laughs> is like, how do I break the news to Willie that Taylor's a guy? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you know what though? You 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 were not disrespectful. No, I won't. And it, it, not on no day have you ever been disrespectful. And guess what? I believe people can believe what they want to believe. That's, and I don't have fair. Any, That's I don't so have fair, any forms bro. about that. And guess what? I still work the foundation like none other. If Taylor it. wants to adopt at that time, he just wouldn't have been able to do it through your foundation. <laughs> <at that time. laughs> right. But it's another foundation out there where we can get some babies. So, you know, so I respect that and I respect you and your foundation. And you built that foundation based on your mother. It carries your mother's and your father's name. And I respect that so much. And you were not doing, you weren't talking out of out of hate. You were not being disrespectful. You were not being belittling. You were not, you carry your own belief systems. And guess what? You get to do that. Yeah. I don't, I don't get to tell you how to believe or how to run your foundation. 
you know, and signs and symbols are for the conscious mind. And then due time this came up, we were able to, you know, have a great conversation about it. Mm-hmm. Um, and maybe two years ago wasn't the time. Maybe that wasn't the platform in the middle middle of a board meeting. You know, it, it, it God's yeah. timing, like we can plan oh, yeah. all we want, but God's timing is the best. So that's that's how I feel. I think Carlton was referring to, you know, if you don't know, you don't know. Yeah. I think he's mm-hmm. referring to people Who intentionally mm-hmm. being disrespectful or belittling. Like in, if you're intentionally spewing hate, that's something totally different. Yeah. But if you just don't know, you just don't know. Yeah. And there's so many things that we still don't know as parents, but we're going to work through it together. We're going to misstep and we're going to give each other grace. Period. Um, you know, as this, this, you know, kind of putting the ball in this thing, you know, as I told you in the beginning, I ain't trying to change your mind. I I don't want you to just be in agreement for agreement. I want you to just have a level of respect. We have been so ignorant to what's really happening right under our nose that I think sometimes we get so caught up in gender roles and and all of that that we forget that there's people with hearts and families and mothers and fathers and uncles and cousins and friends and who are attached to the people that sometimes we spew hate on or we show love without respect you know i often think about jesus and the reason why i chose jesus and the reason why i'm such a christian and the reason why i love god and still like have this beautiful freedom and i still like still go out with my friends and i and i have this lovely freedom is because god he chooses to be patient with me he chooses to say i know where you are but i honor your heart posture right and so because your heart posture is postured with love that i never like I never have an intention to hurt anybody. And I believe that's probably you. But without education, you could be stepping on somebody's toes and you don't necessarily even know that you hurt them. So listen, I can't I, listen, I, I can't tell you what to do or how to think, but I know what I can do. I can challenge you to pray before you say. I can challenge you to love before you judge. And I could challenge you to have a conversation with people who are going through this journey with grace. And I think today you got an opportunity to witness two people who look like you, who care like you about their children and their daughters and sons, just like you. And for some reason, I think a parent was able to put themselves in the shoes of two people who are learning with a smile and with grace. So my prayer today is that every person under the sound of my voice will learn how to love themselves a little more so they can have that type of authority. Because what I've seen today is two people who actually love themselves. So in their overflow, they can love their son. Make sure you subscribe to the channel for more very, very fun and educational content, sometimes comedic. But I think today was just a day that we really had to have this conversation because it's a lot going on in the world. And if it doesn't have a face and a heartbeat behind it, sometimes you just overlook it. Right. So do me a favor. Subscribe to this channel. Be on the lookout for next week, because next week is going to be very, very special. We got new music coming. Another part of the series is coming. I won't tell you what it is, but you will see a trailer right after this. And uh, do me a favor. Become a part of our community. Right now, all this stuff, I'm paying. Clean up out my pocket. Good thing we got a few systems that allow it to keep coming. But I would love for you to partner with us, right? Like, become a partner. All you got to do is click the little link in the bio here on YouTube. Click the link on Facebook. And if you're watching Microcosms of the Long Form Content on Instagram, make sure that you hit the link in my bio. And uh, just become a partner. It's real easy. I think it's like $11, $12 a month. It don't even really, you know, it's, it's nothing really, really hard and strenuous. But with a lot of us, we can really make impact and make sure that the world gets the content that you just enjoy in the inbox mirror them. I want us to become omnipresent with this message. I'm evangelical about what I believe. I believe everybody needs to love themselves more so they can love their children like those parents just love their son. I'm learning. Flat out. And it is a wrap.
Thank you for watching the Love You More show. I'm so humbled by it. Do me a favor. Hit that little notification bell so you can be informed whenever we do some updates right here on this show. Hit subscribe. Leave a comment. I'm going to read every single com comment, good or bad, right? Because I believe a good conversation is necessary in order for us to move forward. Thank you for watching the Love You More show. Hey, Stone, come on in. I'm tell sorry. Him, just tell him thank you. Tell him thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. He don't no, even know what he's thank you for, but thank you for watching the show. Flat out. Love you more. Love you more.